welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we got something today from the Vitavon team. Uh, for the Lossy LMT we have the CNC machined aluminium axle housings for, that's the rear one. Um, same as all the uh, Vitavon stuff, really really nice redesign. Angled the bottom brackets in, take some of the tension out of the uh, suspension rods, connecting rods or links, whatever you want to call them, and they're all using the uh, oversized bearings that come supplied with it. So as you can see the uh, connections for the hubs are all machined into one. Uh, you've got four different mounting points front and rear for the shocks. So well, let's crack on with getting these fitted to the LMT. Right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is get the wheels off. And I'm not sure which vehicle I got this uh, wheel wrench with. I believe it was one of Armour's looking at it. Looks like a design for one of Armour's. Either that or it might have been the uh, Abeo, but I'm thinking it's an Armour one. It's the first time I've had a look at these, so they actually come with uh, looks like aluminium uh, hexes. Certainly a bit of a uh, different design on the LMT wheels. If I can get this one off. Now the nuts off. it so if I can capture the nut bit of a different design on these with the hex being uh, separately sort of bolted into the wheel so that's got two of them off let's quickly uh, remove the other two That definitely looks like it's wobbling about a lot. I have to have a look at that, see if this, uh, see if that hex has come loose off the back of the wheel, because it certainly seems to be moving. Nah, no movement in back of that, so I'm guessing the wheel nut had nearly fell off. That's going to be uh, something to keep an eye out on. You don't want to be losing wheels and wheel nuts. It does kind of look like that amount of play is normal in them. Let's see if we can tighten it up. Nope. So yeah, definitely something worth keeping an eye on. It looks like the uh, wheel nuts either work the way loose or they weren't tightened up at the factory. So that's definitely uh, something to look out for because you will end up rounding the uh, hex drive off. But it doesn't look like it's done any damage in there. It was just a bit loose. Right. So what we're going to start with, we'll start with the rear one. So the next thing we want to do is get these links off. Uh, let's have a look what size these are. So it looks like they're two millimeter. And with these, the the actual Vitavon parts come with their own um, screw and nut for these. So. What I would suggest doing is just putting the stock one back in so you don't lose the uh, nut or the bolt off it. And you don't have to go crazy tightening these up, what you're putting back in, just enough to uh, get the actual nut so you're not losing, uh, losing parts. And I believe that is a hex as well, so 
Let's have a look what size that one is. It does look bigger than two. Yep, definitely bigger than two mil. So that's a 2.5 mil, and I believe yet yeah, you have to pull them all the way out to get them off. Let's try and keep these in order. So let's flip it round, and we'll do the same on this side. The electric drivers definitely uh, speed the job up and they do make it a whole lot easier. I believe Vitavon's also released these as well, these suspension links. And this is uh, this LMT has probably only been run uh, what we had one, two. So it's only had four batteries through it and that was done just as it slid off a curb so it's not actually been hit on anything it was just slipping off a curb but as you can see the stock housing has either already split or it arrived like that I'm not sure which But yeah, the, these these original plastic housings really not up to much because this has not had much use and it's really not been abused when it has been used. But I'm quite surprised to see that uh, that's already broken. Right, so next thing, and again, two point five five mil. I think this one is. Yep. So if we then undo. The pin that retains the drive shaft. And that should allow this assembly to drop back if I can pry it off. Right, let's have a look what else we've got. So I'll just pop that back into the drive shaft so we don't uh, we don't lose the pin. Right, so next we'll remove the shocks. So we're going to take them out, and again, you can just put that nut and bolt back through because the Vitavon housings do come with new ones of those. And I believe, yeah, these ones are two millimeter hex drive. I think we're going to have to have something to hold the knot on the back of those. So we can slide the shock out now and then just put the nut and bolt back through. Again, just so it don't go missing in case you ever want to put these back on, but we which state of that broken already. I uh, can't ever see myself using these again.
So let's get the other shock off. Right, so now we can fold it down that way and same again with these. Let's see if we can get that on to hold it. That's going to be a tight fit. Yeah, same with these. These uh, nuts and bolts all come supplied with Vitavon, so we're not going to be reusing any of these. that round and we'll get this side off And to be totally honest, I'm, I'm quite surprised how easy this is to strip down. Um, I did think this was going to be quite a task. But up to now, it doesn't seem too bad. Right, so if we flip this round again. And I think that nut's captivated, so... We should just be able to screw this straight out. I think it's these bearings that are oversized on the uh, bit of on housings. I'm just checking. Yep. So this nut and bolt is also supplied with the uh, Vitabon ones. So we'll just nip that back up. Stop it getting lost. Right. So. Basically, that's what you should be left with. And let's get, uh, in fact, let's get that moved that way. And I'll get the camera closer down so you can see what we're doing with the actual housing itself. Right, so this is the first time I'm doing this and we have no instructions, or I'm not using any instructions should I say. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is get these far out. And again with these, we won't be using any of the uh, stock screws. These are all going to be replaced with the Vitavon ones. So all I'm going to be doing is stripping this down and then just building it back up so we don't lose all the uh, screws and everything. And the Vitavon casings do come with um, two bearings loose in the top of the packaging. And I believe they're these ones. So it'd be quite interesting to see what the uh, main differences are inside. 
once we get these two open. I'm not sure if we have to remove any of that to get this off. Let's have a look. No. So it looks like that'll slide out. So that's his input gear and at least there is um, a blob of grease. It looks like they've put one on there hoping that it had spread around a bit. So that's his input bearing but we have got plenty of grease in there to use. So let's get the uh, bit of on casing apart. So with each one of the Vitavon uh, housings you get two of these bearings and by the looks of it it's for uh, there and the inside. Let's just get them fitted. So you want that fitted flush down into the bottom and then that one as far as it will go. And then what we should be able to do is drop this straight through. And then that should sit in the back nicely. So we're going to have to take the output drives off. So we'll get these off. I believe these are all 2mm on the Vitavon. And I think they're going to be 2mm on the um, stock one as well. And again, these Vitavon uh, axles come with the bearing already fitted into the end of these um, hubs, I think is the uh, best word for them. And I'll have a quick look in a minute to see if these are actually bigger than these stock ones as well, which wouldn't surprise me. They do look it. they just pull off and they are keyed so they'll only go in one position and uh, you get a bearing in the back one in the front so, yeah so it's two mil hex drives hex heads in the uh, Vitavon one and 1.5 hexes in the stock part So it looks like Vitavon's pretty much beefed up every single part of this axle, including the screw heads. Which is probably a good thing, seems though this has only had some very gentle use. Like four or six batteries, I can't remember which. Um, and we've already got chunks missing off the uh, axle cover or axle housing cover. Now it is a bit of a shame with these uh, these axle housings because the car is fantastic. The LMT is pretty much everything you'd want from that size scale monster truck. Um, it's just a bit of a weird choice with these axles. They just don't seem to be up to what the actual vehicle could do when he's actually advertised for. Right, so if we drop these out 
and as you can see these are off center on the original uh, housings so if we take that out and we put that into the new one let's see if we can get it in and if you can see the bit of on bearings both front and rear on this are a lot bigger than the uh, stock bearing which is going to help so you want to remove your drive shaft and then what we're going to be uh, looking at now is we're going to remove these four and then doesn't look like they've got shims but they have got a ridge on the bearing and these are cut out so hopefully it should fit straight in because on the Vitavon one we're going to have to put the diff casing the diff and the casing in the actual axle housing um, before we put the drive shafts back in because we're going to have to close the housing up Um, due to the fact that the uh, diff carrier is now on the cover and it's going to be bracketed in. So if you look on these, the inner side has the ridge cut out. So that's got that ready. Now I'm not sure if the diff will lift out just with one of these dog bones being out. Yeah, it will. So this can go either way around. So I'm going to sit it in and doesn't look like there is any play in that whatsoever. So looks like the bearings sit perfectly in there. Yep, that one's in right. And then again, this one with the recess to the inside. And you can tell if you've got it lined up right, because even without it being tightened down, they should be pretty much nipped up. Feels like it's got a hold of that really good. So nothing's grinding or anything. And then let's have a look. So basically, we can get some of this grease that's kind of missed this uh, gear completely. So if we gather some of that back up and then We've got a whole load of grease that's in the original diff housing, if you like, or axle cover. It seems though this has only had less than probably 10 batteries through it. I'm just going to use this grease and get it, uh, get it all spread about back in here. So if you just give it a good spin round, make sure nothing's grinding, nothing's restricting, it's not hitting anything. So that's all good. Uh, one thing worth making a note of is this is the rear one. So when you put this back together, you want these at the top and the drive gear facing away from you. Because if you get them wrong, you're going to end up with your wheels spinning the wrong way around, which is not good. Right, next thing we need to do is get this other housing apart.
And the nice thing with this being aluminium, um, a lot of the nuts and bolts that hold the suspension on, you're not going to have to mess around using the uh, extra bolts because they've got threaded aluminium to go into. So let's keep all this the same way around and we'll make sure we keep that one with the side that it can again. Back to the original axle, we've got a bunch of uh, 1.5mm hex screws to take out. And it certainly makes life a hell of a lot easier with an electric driver. Uh, I think I've mentioned it before in a couple of the other videos, but these are the MIP speed bits that I'm using. I find even when you get down to the uh, 050 bit um, MIP drivers, you won't ever round off a hex head as long as uh, as long as it's not a crazy amount of thread lock that's been put on a part or you're not quite lined up properly so basically we back that way around so what we need to do now is remove this And save your old bearings. So we need this from the other side, the hub, and you just want to put that back in. Sometimes these can be a bit awkward. Uh, it depends, especially if it's got a bit of crud on it. But you should be able to work it back through. And now when we go to put these back on, you've got this little sort of key and if I spin this over you can see the key on there so it looks like what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to close this back up because your, your diff's actually fastened to the cover now so we'll get that back in and then you've got a bunch of, I believe these are 2.5 mils. And you want your drive gear to the uh, furthest away from you when you've got these three at the top. And again with these screws you can put a bit of thread lock on them if you're worried about them coming undone. So once we get these four back in we should then be able to uh, slide the dog bone drive shafts back through. And you don't need to go crazy, crazy tight with these. It's not, uh, it's not going to work its way loose. It's not going to come undone. So once you've got that in, you should then be able to slide your drive shafts back in, and you'll see when it's engaged because it'll spin the uh, output gear, and then line it up with the keyed space on there. So once it's all back together, if you just want to hold it and try it, you should be able to see it spin. Right, now we need the 2mm 
screws back in the uh, hubs and I'll just swap the speed bit over and all I tend to do if I'm putting them into aluminium like this I'll just loosely hold the screwdriver or loosely hold the part and then I'll, I'll finish up tightening them up by hand because you don't want to uh, you don't want to rip your threads out. And on a driver like this one, I have it set on the absolute lowest torque setting, which uh, you'll usually hear it jump if I'm taking apart something where the screws are really really tight you'll hear it jump so once you've got them in you can just nip them up and again it's it's pretty hard aluminium but just bear in mind you are going into aluminium still so you you don't want to go crazy crazy tight just tight enough to uh, hold it together Right, and then while we've got it at that stage, we might as well pop the uh, hexes back on. So with these, just line your hole up straight through the middle, and then you can pop that back in and just tighten it down. And again with this, it just needs to be tight, not crazy tight, because the wheel's on it anyway, so it's not going to fall out. Right, then we can drop to the other side and put us drive shaft in, and if you just spin it around, you'll feel it drop. And then same again, you've got the little keyed shape, so line your drive shaft up, and you'll feel it when it drops, and then you just need to close that up so it goes goes all the way home and then get the two mil bolts back in The uh, MIP speed bits definitely grab hold of the hex heads. And it's quite surprising how, how, how much they do grab into the head, so it's, it's not really surprising that you don't tend to uh, shear the Allen key head or hex head off using MIP bits. Just working my way around and just making sure these are all tight. Right, so that's the axle pretty much assembled. We've got one more hex drive to put on. So I've not really felt the need to shim anything on this. Uh, it all feels, all feels like it's gone back together nicely. All feels nice and smooth. The diff's behaving like it should. So now we can quickly just chuck all this back together. Uh, again, you've got a little key on each one of those. So I'll just quickly uh, 
get all this back together so we're not losing screws. And you don't need to put the screws all the way back, um, back in. It's just to stop bits going missing. And I'm not entirely sure how that's broken off because there's no marks or anything where it's been hit. So whether it's just the flexing of it that's cracked it apart, not sure. But right, so there we have it. There's the axle fully assembled, fully working. So let's grab the LMT and get that back. Right, so we want these two lifted up, them two are going on top, then that's your drive shaft. So, first thing we're going to need to do, we're going to want the uh, retaining pin out of drive shaft, so that's 2.5mm. So we'll get that took out. And then, looking at this, we're going to have a... I'm thinking most of these are going to be 2.5 mil. So let's see. Definitely going to need that one removed first. So if we remove that. So that's the way round it's going to sit with those on there and then finally they're going to come through and fasten on the bottom. So let's see if we can line these up. start this by hand so we know we're not cross threading it This don't have to be tightened up crazy. You're not trying to you're not trying to pinch them completely solid between it. It just wants to be tight enough because that's a locking nut just so it won't come loose. So once we've got that in, then we've got one of these either side. And these are for the stabiliser bar. Oh, 
always awkward to get in these little olives. And again, like most of the parts, you're going into aluminium on these, so I'd always do the final turn by hand and just go really careful putting these in and then just nip it up. So then we're going to be putting that on. Right. Let's get this in place. Now I'm going to put the drive shaft on and the little retaining pin. And then once they're in place, we can do the uh, bottom stabilizer bars or steering links, uh, suspension links, sorry. Now, as you can see, Vitavon have angled these so you've got less stress on the uh, little ball pivots at the end. And it should let it move through its suspension travel with uh, less resistance on it. Overall, this LMT is not uh, not a bad vehicle to work on. Certainly done. Certainly had far worse times on RCs. And this this is quite an, an in-depth thing to swap. Right. So, lastly, we're going to go for the uh, bottoms of the suspension. And again on these, uh, because the Vitavon one is screwing into aluminium, you don't have to mess about with a lock nut on the back like you do with the original. Let's have a look, which one shall I go with? I'll go with one in from, from the outer one. looks like it lines up more with uh, the position of the stock ones. Let's get this last olive in. So it looks like full travel and you cannot you can tell if you've got your diffs the right way because if you spin this forward the front wheels should also move forward 
So just a little tip for you there. And the diff functioning correctly. So let's get you a close up look. Right. So this will give you a good look of how it fits on the uh, RC. So it looks really nice. You've got the full motion of travel without any binding or anything anywhere. And if I can flip it over, give you an idea of what it looks like when it's on. But that's the rear housing fitted. Uh, we're going to initially do it all in one video, but it's long enough as it is. So, thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like what you've seen, like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to see when we do uh, other guides and videos uploaded. And I'll catch you guys again in the next one.